The compound microscope is a little bit more complex than the dissecting microscope. It has a few more uh, dials and it needs uh, a little, little more careful treatment. It's used for looking at specimens that are generally microscopic to the naked eye um, and specimens that are very, very thin so that light can pass through them. And generally how they work is light from a light source is passed through a series of lenses that focuses the light on a specimen, which is clamped on a stage. The image is then passed through the objective lens and then up through the eyepiece lens and into your eye. So that's the path of the light. The parts of the microscope, quickly, well, I'd like to direct your attention to the handles for moving this, this microscope. They are quite heavy. Uh, there's a handle, a very convenient handle up uh, on the post and one under the front. And so when moving these, it's a two-hand grip, gently set it onto the bench. The next uh, um, set of, well, the first set of controls I'll show you is the light. Um, you plug the light in, of course, with the, um, the mains cord, uh, switch it on at the power, and here is the light switch. The dial beneath it is the light intensity, adjusting the, um, the, the single light source up here underneath the stage. Uh, next, you have um, what's called the stage, where the microscope slide is clamped. Now, uh, there is a clamp here where the slide can be um, securely positioned. Uh, a lot of students don't quite get it clamped in properly, so, so uh, pay some attention there. And then these are the stage manipulation controls. You can move that specimen around side to side, back to front very accurately using these controls. You can move the stage by, um, by holding the stage and we don't want you to do this. Um, it's kind of driving it in the wrong way. We just want you to adjust the stage using these controls. Um, as I mentioned earlier, here is the light source. There's an iris diaphragm on top of the light source we'll talk about in a minute. Here is a series of lenses uh, called the condenser. Now that is adjusted using the knob on this side of the microscope. And we'll talk about adjusting the condenser in a minute. On the condenser itself is another iris diaphragm. And uh, that's an important control for varying the amount of light passing through the sample. And it works, uh, if you're familiar with cameras, by uh, constricting or dilating uh, a, a series of, um, well, I suppose you call them baffles, to allow more light or less light. Next, we have a series of lenses called the objective lenses, uh, uh, mounted on this device called a turret. And you can select the objective lens that you want by rotating the turret around. You can hear it click into place. There are four lenses. The lowest powered lens has a red band and that is four times. Then you rotate it to the yellow band ten times and then to the blue band which is 40 times and generally that's as high as we go. The white and black banded 100 um, magnification objective lens is only used for special purposes and it has to be used with a drop of oil that excludes air and changes the refractive index uh, of the light passing through it and we don't use that and in fact I want you to be careful about uh, uh, rotating that lens into position. Quite often if the specimen is fairly thick and you rotate that white lens into position you're going to jam it between or, or jam it into the specimen itself and uh, maybe crack the slide or, or maybe even do some damage to the objective lens itself. So generally we don't use that one. Uh, the, Next part is the, is the um, uh, well, the eyepiece lenses that uh, you are able to adjust the um, uh, interpillary distances or the distances between your eyes. And then um, on the top is the camera that uh, the image can be sent to your computer.
I think I've got all the parts. Oh, the focus. Um, uh, there are two focus knobs. The larger knob on the inside is the coarse focus. And you can see when you move that, there's a lot of movement in the stage. Uh, and then on the inside of that larger knob is a smaller knob, and that's the fine focus. And you can see I can rotate that quite a lot. You don't see any movement in the stage at all. Now, uh, setting up the microscope is, is a little bit complex. The first thing that you would do uh, when you set this microscope up in front of you is, of course, to plug it in and switch on the light, make sure you are getting some light coming out of the light source. You would get your slide that you're going to view and clamp it onto the stage. This is very important. Make sure that you are using the low magnification objective lens that's clipped into place. Uh, then you would adjust the distances between your two eyes, like so, so that when you're using your eyes, it looks like one circle. Now, using the stage manipulating controls, get the sample into the center of, of the light source. And I'm not looking at the microscope, or I'm not looking down the lenses, I'm looking at, the, at where I expect the sample to be, to position that in the center. Then, looking down the microscope, use the big knob to get it into focus. Now, you might need quite a bit of movement in the stage. It may be uh, a long way out of the correct focal distance. Then readjust the sample to get it into the, the center. Whatever you, you want to view, center it. And, uh, and that should have the sample focused up. You may want to use the fine focus. And now, um, the next thing we have to do is adjust the condenser. The condenser, as I mentioned, was this series of lenses. And its job is to take the light from the light source and actually focus it into a sharp point onto your specimen. And this can make a, a lot of um, difference in, in getting the, um, uh, the, um, the, the image sharp. Uh, a poorly focused condenser will, um, will, give you, will give you a poor image. And so focusing the condenser uh, goes like this. You start by getting the sample focused on the low magnification on the times four objective lens. Once you get a reasonable sample focused, you, you then close this, this light source diaphragm. And looking down the microscope, you can see this shadow appear. And you can't close it completely. There's a small circle of light in the center. Then, looking down the microscope, you adjust the condenser up and down until that shadow, until that, that um, closed ring um, that you produced by rotating this dial is sharp. So that is the focus of the light source. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that nice and sharp, as sharp as you can. And then once that, that uh, shadow image is sharp, you open up that diaphragm until, until the light increases, until it fills the field of view. Now this is a mistake a lot of students often make. They leave that, that uh, iris diaphragm from the light source shut and you know, uh, it's a wonder you can see anything at all. So that has to be reopened. And now we focus the condenser. It's something that you should do every time you get a microscope out from the bench and, uh, and set it up for the first time. The next thing you have to do is focus the microscope for your two eyes and of course the uh, binocular microscopes. They, they're meant to be used with both eyes to give you the best image. You set again the distance between your two eyes and then very similar to the dissecting microscope first of all you only use your right eye so looking at the sample with your right eye get it into sharp focus and then shut your right eye just looking through the right eyepiece refocus but not using the focus controls on the body, using the focus control on the left eyepiece itself. So you rotate that until the image is sharp. 
and now it's focused for both of your eyes. This is something that you should do when you set the microscope up and even every time you swap between, you know, if you're working in pairs, you, you should really focus for your own eyes. Um, every time you go to use this microscope, every time you, you share it between your partner. Um, some of the images that we're looking at using this microscope are very, very small. And if this isn't focused correctly, it, you, know, you may not see anything at all or the detail will be very poor. Now, what I'm looking at under the microscope at the moment is times 40 its normal size because the eyepiece lens is times 10, the objective lens is times 4, multiply them together, 10 times 4 is 40. So we're getting a lot of detail. If you want to look at that specimen under more detail, rotate it to the next objective lens, which will be 10 times 10, 100, and refocus, but only focus using the small knob on the inside. If you use the large knob, the movement out of the focal plane will be quite great and, and you'll lose the image probably straight away and sometimes it's hard to get back. If that happens, you know, and we get a lot of students saying, I can't see anything. Well, what you should, uh, what you should do before um, before you call over a demonstrator is rotate the um, objective lens back down to its lowest magnification and search for the specimen again and refocus. You center it and then rotate it to the next highest magnification and you should be able to see it. Refocus using the fine focus and if you want some more detail go to the highest magnification. Ten times 40 is 400. 400 times its normal size. And then of course just sharpen the focus using the fine focus knob. And all the time, you know, readjusting uh, the, the, the particular structure you want to view, you get that into the center. Uh, and that should do it. Now, um, putting this away, just very briefly, um, you the, the pack-up procedure is to return it to its lowest magnification, always remove the slide, turn off the light source, uh, put it onto its lowest uh, light intensity, just, just loosely um, wrap the cords around. They don't have to be tight or even very neat, just loosely wrapped around, and of course pop back on a dust cover. And um, most students would appreciate uh, when they get a microscope out, finding it in that condition.